All right, so it's been a couple days since my last video on Revolve, which reports on Wednesday, and a few things have happened. Uh, number one, Under Armour reported today. They said a few things in their conference call, which might be important to us. Uh, number two, I found a private company that gave a comparable private company that gave some statements as to uh, what sort of sales they were experiencing pre and post COVID. They're also 100% e-commerce company, so we'll go into that. And lastly, the price went through the roof. So uh, I had to figure out what to do with my position. I mean, I'll show you my position and you'll see sort of the predicament I'm in. All right, so let's get into it. So Under Armour reported today, they had a bit of a disaster, but let's zone in on what matters to us. We only care about the e-commerce section of their business. So when we go into the conference call, uh, the very first question, I think this is the first question. No, it's not, I lied. But anyways, so Goldman Sachs asks Under Armour, you know, how is the e-commerce company, the e-commerce product company doing? And basically, you know, what is the cadence of the growth in the first quarter compared to the second quarter? So Goldman Sachs right here is basically trying to get a read on how e-commerce is improving going to Q2. So this is something that will affect guidance, not exactly results. And um, Under Armour basically responded that initially e-commerce e took a big dump and then they started recovering uh, later, especially say, they say halfway into April. And that's exactly what the data shows. I showed you this last time. Um, you see e-commerce growth for clothing. It was negative all the way throughout March or it started going bad two weeks into March. And then all of a sudden in April, in the, in the middle of April exactly, 4.16, it started shooting all the way back up and that's what they said. So this isn't exactly new information, but it sort of gives us confirmation into what we were already suspecting. Now, this might be a little more interesting for us. So basically I was looking for another example of a sort of pure e-commerce company that might've reported beforehand. So you sort of get a beat on what's gonna happen with Revolve. And I couldn't find any in terms of clothing. There were very few clothing public companies which reported that had basically an e-commerce only company. Most clothing companies report later in the month. But when I looked, I did find that the CEO of Fanatics gave a statement. Now, what this company is, it's um, mostly e-commerce company and they do have some physical presence, but they broke it out in the statement right here. It's a private company, but they decided to give comment anyway. This is a company that uh, <clears throat> they sell sports apparel, uh, jerseys, and stuff like that. So what did they say? Now, this is very useful for us because they have very similar to numbers to what we were expecting. They said they were trending up 20% pre-coronavirus. That's exactly what Revolve said in their statement. They were also expecting they were trending up 20% pre-coronavirus. And then they said they dipped down to 30 to 40% once the virus hit. This statement is dated to the end of March. So they, this is basically talking about the effects of coronavirus from the second week of March to the end. They were saying it's down 30 to 40%. If we go back to the Bank of America credit card uh, details, they, it's actually <laughs> incredible how, you know, how this lined up. They have sports apparel broken out into its own category, and then they have clothing exports, which is what we are. So we can take a look at uh, the performance of sports apparel just by themselves compared to us. Now, it appears as though sports apparel did 20 basis points worse than clothing exports. So if you take a look at, if you take Fanatic statement of down 30 to 40%, why don't we just give it to the middle, the midpoint and say 35, if they were down 35%, it's entirely possible that for the last three weeks of March, um, a regular clothing company such as Revolve might've been down 15%. So uh, just, you know, let's do some elementary math. If they were going 20% January, 20% in March, and then they were, they lose 15% in, uh, did I miss that statement up? They were getting 20% in January, 20% in February, and then they lose 15% in March. And then you divide this by three, you would expect a growth rate of 8%. Now, you know, luckily for us, the analysts only expect a growth rate of 3%. If you see here, they expect an average of 140 million in revenues. And last quarter, they it, uh, Revolve made 137 million. This is actually probably closer to to 2.5%. So it looks like um, a revenue beat is pretty likely here. Um, 
but this, you know, we had a segue into the last section of what we're talking about. All right, so the last thing we have to worry about here is the price action, because it has, the stock has been an absolute terror um, <laughs> since I made the first video. It's almost up like 40% or so. So we have to be careful with what we expect going into earnings. It might even be totally priced in. I'm not sure. I mean, look, so the thing is, we're still below what we were in February, but February, this crash right here is not all because of COVID. You had, they actually missed their earnings in February before the crash. So you'd have, you'd have factored that in as well. So how far can we go up even? Maybe 15? I don't know. So if you take a look, my, I bought these shares on accident. If you follow my Twitter account, you know I usually don't buy shares. I buy options. And this is the state of my options. <laughs> I'm up like 150%. So <laughs> it's getting kind of hard to justify holding all of this going into earnings when I basically have it for free. I'm definitely, it's looking like I might sell a good portion of this. So uh, don't expect me to hold all of this, even when I'm expecting a good beat. Um, I definitely will hold the December calls, but the May 15th calls, they might be gone. <laughs> so eh, that's that's the update on my position.